Nightcast. Stephen Lloyd Gilbert brings you the current news from the world today and how it relates to Bible prophecy. Understanding the end time events leading to the peaceful world tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Lloyd Gilbert. Good evening, friends, and welcome to this September 30, 2014 edition of Nightcast. Our opening story tonight, a mountain guide who was on Japan's Mount Ontake when it erupted without warning has been speaking about what happened. Sayori Ogawa is a mountain guide. On Saturday, she was climbing alone, scouting a new route up Japan's second highest volcano. She shows me the point where she was standing, right near the summit, when Mount Ontake suddenly exploded without warning. It was a beautiful autumn day. Suddenly, I heard a noise. I looked back and saw tons of ashes and rocks in the air. I crouched down. The smell of sulfur was really strong, and I couldn't breathe. Then I saw lots of rock flying. I really thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to be trapped in a gas and die right there at the spot. I thought to myself, why did I come here today? Completely exposed, Sayori jammed herself into a hole in the rocks. She hid there for an hour as the mountain exploded just meters away. I hid beneath the rock. Sometimes I could see 30 meters, then suddenly it would go completely black. There were three big eruptions. The last one was the biggest. That was when I saw a rock the size of a small car or others the size of washing machines flying by. I could hear the noise, swish, swish, of the rocks flying by. After an hour, the eruptions abated. Sayori took her chance and ran for it, climbing down as fast as she could go. But she knew there were many others still back up there on the mountaintop. I wonder about those people I saw hanging around on the peak. People who were taking pictures and enjoying the view. It was a really beautiful day. People were having a great time. There was a lot of laughing. People were happy. Now I wonder what happened to them. I ask her if the experience will stop her from going back to the mountains. She says she's already been and she'll go again tomorrow. The mountains, she says, are her life. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News in Komagane, central Japan. Friends, we showed you video last night, or the past couple of nights, uh, that showed the beginning, uh, the, the moments when that volcano exploded. The following video will open with some of that same footage. However, the BBC's Laura Westbrook will then go on in the video and show some current new video from today showing the current status of this volcano in this report with the BBC's Laura Westbrook. The moment Mount Ontake exploded into life. This video shows these hikers escaping into a mountain lodge before being plunged into darkness on Saturday. Rocks and ash rained down on them as they struggled to breathe. They filmed their escape down the mountain. They were the lucky ones. Three days later and this mountain continues to spew smoke and ash into the sky. The rescue operation has now turned into a recovery operation. Helicopters went back and forth into the ash cloud to collect the bodies. At least 12 have been brought down, but many more remain stuck close to the crater. They've been brought here to this primary school, which is being used as a temporary morgue. Family members arrive to identify those who've been recovered. The dangerous conditions at the summit has made the recovery operation much more difficult. It now seems impossible that anyone else could have survived here for three days. Laura Westbrook, BBC News. 
And friends, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we've been showing you what's happening, been happening in Hong Kong for the past few days where thousands more people today have been joining the pro-democracy protesters there in Hong Kong ahead of what organizers hope will be the largest day of, of protest so far. Tens of thousands of people have been blocking parts of the city for days. They're demanding that China withdraw plans to vet candidates for the next leadership election in 2017. Carrie Gracie has this report on today's protest activities from Hong Kong. Helping each other over the top, signs apologizing for disruption, and taking round refreshments. No wonder it's called the polite protest. But China called them extremists who show contempt for the law. And Hong Kong's chief executive said he'd had enough. The organizers of Occupy Central have said many times that if the movement goes out of control, it will be halted. So now I call upon them to fulfill their promise and end the action immediately. The answer from the street, stand down now. Protest has spread to another front, blocking roads in one of Hong Kong's busiest shopping districts. Many here say they support the fight for democracy, but they don't want it to drag on. Business is down at least 50 percent. So far the protests are peaceful, but if they disrupt things for too long, the impact will be hard to predict. Everyone finding their voice and no one in charge. The only police to be seen today were behind railings. And even those who once called themselves protest organizers say things have moved beyond their control. This is a people's movement. It is a movement of the people initiated by the Hong Kong people. I think it's, it's nothing to be planned. Since riot police withdrew in the early hours of Monday morning, these people have taken ownership of the heart of Hong Kong. They've even renamed this space Democracy Square. And instead of getting tired, bored or scared as the government hoped, they're actually growing in confidence and conviction. Umbrellas, first used here as shields against police pepper spray. And now it's known as the Umbrella Revolution. It's going to take more than a rainstorm to quench their spirit. For all their good manners, this is a devastating challenge to Chinese authority. Carrie Gracie, BBC News, Hong Kong. And friends, uh, last night I began giving you uh, some just general talk about uh, democracy and about how God has allowed mankind a period of 6,000 years that are pictured by the six days of recreation and following Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden where God kicked them out, put flaming, uh, put angels with flaming swords to block the way of the Garden so that Adam and Eve or any from humanity could not re-enter the Garden of Eden. And that cut mankind, essentially cut mankind off from God for a period of the six days allotted to man under the sway and rule of Satan, where a day in prophecy is a thousand years. And so the six days of recreation, this represents 6,000 years that God is allotting to man to go his own way and form his own government, his own education, and to write the lesson in history that mankind without God cannot govern himself. That will be the bottom line to it all, that we were taught that and given that uh, revelation, that understanding from God by and through his end-time servant, Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong. 
And we're about to see all that play out. One of Mr. Armstrong's instructors at Ambassador College in Pasadena, California, in the Western Civilization class, would almost daily say that democracy is the only form of government that has within itself its own seed of destruction. And I used to wonder... Uh, Day after day, I even asked the instructor several times, you know, Mr. Schultz, what does that, what do you mean by that exactly? And he says, you'll see in your lifetime, Stephen, you'll see it. And he was right. Whether that was a, a prophecy he was speaking to me or just what, I don't know. But it is sure enough, I'm beginning to see it in my own lifetime. We'll see that, you know, these wonderful, fine people in Hong Kong, they're standing up against a dictator the dictatorship government of China. We saw what they did in Tiananmen Square years ago. Now, how's this going to play out with these uh, thousands and thousands of people and thousands more joining them today and China saying, sorry, we're not going to budge. Uh, you know, we heard you. Well, they didn't really hear them. Uh, they, they, they're a noise to to the government leaders in China. They're saying, sorry, you know. Uh, and the local Hong Kong execu chief executive is saying, okay, time to cool it, or we're going to get tough in some way. going to be very interesting to see what happens on that in the next days, a few days. Will the people back down, or will the Hong Kong leadership um, do something like the Chinese dictatorship did in Chinaman's Square, Tiananmen Square uh, years ago and just bring in the army and wipe out hundreds of people and you heard after that people crying Chinese people don't kill Chinese people oh yes they do and they did uh, I was saying last night friends I was making some comment or some um, drawing some parallel to the fact that from the tree of good and evil, there's good on that tree. But I wanted to make the point, and then somehow in the hot of the studio, and yesterday I had done a lot of work outside in, in the, the field where I have a donkey, a horse, and some goats. I was setting, winterizing things, and I had some fence, areas of fence I had to patch up so that I could let them back out into that field. I did a lot of work yesterday. I was exhausted last night. I got into that subject and my mind went blank. I was thinking of this scripture from Isaiah 64, 6 that says, we, but we all are as an unclean thing and are our, all our righteousness, says the righteousness of man, the good that man can do. God is saying this to us. All our righteousnesses are as a filthy rag, and we are as filthy rags, plural, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. But the point right there at the beginning where he says, our, all our righteousnesses, before God, they're just as filthy rags. So what really is important is not what man thinks is good, we have to get on our knees, pray, and ask God, and even fast to ask His will on things. Because if we're not doing God's will, no matter how good it seems to even thousands of men, if it's not, excuse me, if it's not uh, by direct contact and involvement with God, God just considers it our righteousness to be as filthy rags, especially if we ignore Him. You know, even Job, who was perfect in doing the, many of the things of God, did it out of a certain self-righteousness. And God used uh, the situation with Job to help Job see his self-righteousness. That, you know, even you can do things that seem to be godly. And if you do it from just a, a uh, self-righteous attitude and point of view, then even that to God is like a filthy rag. It's just self-righteousness. All right, that's that scripture that I wanted to show you on that. Let's go to the news. Uh, Ukraine and Russia's in the news tonight. Pro-Russian rebels control much of Ukraine's 
eastern border, eastern border with Russia, and as a consequence, the EU is to keep sanctions against Russia in place, judging that Ukraine's peace deal is not fully effective. Oh, and friends, I see this one is, uh, this is just a still. I don't have video with this. I'm going to have to tell you that EU ambassadors who met today had noted some, some encouraging developments since the September 5 ceasefire was agreed, according to an EU spokeswoman. But other parts of the peace deal will quote, need to be properly implemented, said the spokeswoman, Maja, K-O-C-I-J-A-N-C-I-C. -I -I the sanctions target senior Russian officials as well as Russia's oil industry, defense firms, and banks. Western governments and the Ukrainian authorities in Kiev accuse Russia of supplying the separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine with heavy weapons and soldiers. Russia denies the allegations. EU and U.S. sanctions have been in place since Russia's annexation of Crimea in March. Ukrainian troops have been battling separatists in Donetsk and Luhansk in the east. At least 3,200, 3,200 people have died in fighting since April in Ukraine's Donetsk and Luhansk regions, and thousands of civilians have fled the conflict. A shaky ceasefire has held since September 5, and the two sides have since agreed to set up a 30-kilometer, that'd be about a 19-mile buffer zone. But there have been frequent flare-ups of violence. We reported uh, in the news last night, had video on how at least seven Ukrainian soldiers died in a clash with pro-Russian rebels near Donetsk Airport on Monday, yesterday. The deadliest single incident for the military since the truce deal. A tank shell hit the vehicle carrying the troops. More heavy shelling was reported today in the Donetsk airport area. Last week, Ukraine's Prime Minister uh, Arseniy yet. Um, you know, I'm going to have to spell this one for you. I usually can say this, yet since. Yet, Yatsens, Y-A-T-S-E-N, Y-U-K, told the U.N. General Assembly that Russian troops were still operating in eastern Ukraine. He urged the West not to lift sanctions until his country regained control of all its territory. Both the U.S. and the E.U. have said sanctions could be lifted if the situation on the ground improves sufficiently. Our next news story, friends, relates uh, from today, from today's news, has uh, some relation to a, a, a mention that's made in Revelation that I'll tell you about after we, we watch this video that shows how wildlife populations have been halved in the past 40 years. Is there room on our earth for the tiger? Global numbers are down from 100,000 a century ago to just 3,000 now. Humans have taken over tiger habitat and killed the animals for trophies or medicine. Lions are being driven out too. In Ghana alone the lion population in one reserve fell by 90% in four years. People clearing forests for food, timber or fuel is a major cause of species decline. In West Africa, forest felling has restricted elephants to about 7% of their previous range. Freshwater species have suffered the biggest falls, 76% in four decades, the report says. Wildlife-rich chalk streams suffer from pollution and over-extraction of water. 
The big thing that all of us can do, almost no matter where we are in the world, is stopping things like tropical deforestation and impacts from things like palm oil and illegal logging around the world, as well as tackling climate change and, and damage on the oceans. Questions have been raised about the precision of the report's headline figure of a 52% wildlife loss. Critics say the science on the decline in species like bats can be confusing, for instance. But there is no doubt that in many parts of the world, wildlife is on the run. Roger Harabin, BBC News. And friends, there is a verse I mentioned to you. I would, I would uh, read to you from Revelation 6 and verse 8. Let me bring it forward on the screen where it says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Now it's talking about the fourth seal of Revelation here in Revelation 6 at verse 8. And his name that sat on this pale horse, the rider of this pale horse, was named Death. And it says, And hell, and the word for hell there is the Greek word Hades, meaning the grave. And hell, Hades, followed with him, and power was given unto them. Now, right there, them is referring back to the second seal, the third seal, and this fourth seal, because it then, it then says to kill with sword. Sword means war, and that's the second seal, the red horse. War, rumors of war, war world war, revival of round three of world war. And with hunger. Hunger, that's famine, that's scarcity of food, that's the third seal, the black horse. And with death, and the death is referring to this pale horse mentioned here in verse 8 as part of the fourth seal with a rider whose name is death. And then it adds, and with the beast of the earth. And that's it for our Tuesday night report. God willing and the creek don't rise. We'll be back again tomorrow night, Wednesday night, with the day's current news related to the Bible and prophecy here on Nightcast. Until next time, this is your host, Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth, saying so long and good night, friends. You have been watching Nightcast with Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth. Nightcast can be seen Sunday through Thursday nights here on COGTV.org. Tonight's program is also available anytime on demand in the COGTV.org video archive.